This is your Catholic Daily Journal for Tuesday, January the 8th, 2019. Today is the feast day of Our Lady of Prompt Secours, the patroness of New Orleans and Louisiana. Devotion to Our Lady of Prompt Secours began when an Ursuline nun named Mother St. Michael made a seemingly hopeless request to Pope Pius VII. Her prayer was for speedy help, and it was received. And a few years later, when a great fire of 1812 spread through the French Quarter in New Orleans, the sisters turned again to Our Lady, and the convent was miraculously spared. Just three years later, when American General Andrew Jackson's 6,000 American troops faced 15,000 British soldiers on the plains of Chalmette, just outside the city of New Orleans, the sisters and the people of New Orleans asked for more prompt succor, speedy help from Our Lady, and she provided. The Americans won that victory, and that can be described as a miraculous victory. Today is the shared birthday of three of the 20th century's most interesting and entirely different personalities. In 1935, in Tupelo, Mississippi, Elvis Presley, the king, was born. He was a phenomenon as much as he was a man, and he remains at the heart of a near-religious devotion. His music ranged from classic gospel to rock and roll to proto-disco, and his blue eyes are haunting, even in pictures. In 1942, in Oxford, England, Stephen Hawking was born. He would go on to describe the science of black holes and time as a function and a corollary of space. Hawking's ideas were revolutionary in that many of the problems he solved came from data that many other great scientists had been looking at and pondering over for years. Hawking's insights about the speed of light and the application of Albert Einstein's special relativity opened up an entire field of physics, questioning so-called dark matter and dark energy, which may be far more abundant than anything we've seen in the universe thus far. He died this past year and is buried at Westminster Abbey in London. And finally, in 1894, in what was then Russia but is now Poland, Maximilian Kolbe was born. As a young priest, he founded Marytown, which was a kind of commune for those in need of spiritual or physical nourishment. He was a publisher and a preacher and was deeply beloved by all sorts of different people. It was his publishing that put him on the wrong side of Adolf Hitler and landed him in the Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camp. And one day, after a few prisoners broke some rules, the commandant called for a decimation. That is, the guards would go down the lines of prisoners and count them off. One, two, three, all the way up to ten. And anyone who got the number ten was put in the dreaded starvation cells in Building 15. Father Maximilian Maximilian got the number nine. And a family, or rather the father of a large family next to him, got a ten. Colby stepped up and asked to take his place. The commandant said okay, and St. Maximilian went to his death by starvation. A large candle set up by Pope St. John Paul II remains arranged in that cell to this day. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. And until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.